Hello, welcome to the lecture series on vehicle dynamics. I would like to start with vehicle dynamic fundamentals. So first let me explain vehicle dynamic metrics, performance, ride and handling. Then I'll take up tractive resistance and tractive power. Then we will see how to estimate tractive resistance and tractive power. Then estimate dynamic longitudinal load transfer as well as lateral load transfer. Then estimate the forces between road and wheel. Okay, now let us start with the since vehicle dynamics, what I am talking about is the ground vehicle dynamics. So we will consider only the ground vehicles. So first of all, the ground vehicles we can classify as non-guided ground vehicles, guided ground vehicles. This is called guided ground vehicles because the track is fixed. On the track, the vehicle has to go. The track rather guides the vehicle. So basically, so it's a rail, rail. So the trains, particularly what we talk about, they are guided ground vehicles. Okay. So the other vehicles, we call them as non-guided ground vehicles. Other vehicles in the sense, the motor vehicles, we call them as non-guided ground vehicles. You are the road, but on the road, it is up to the driver to follow a particular, you know, guide the vehicle. So he has to steer the vehicle to the required, to make the vehicle follow the required path. So as such, the ground is not, or whatever it is, track is not going to guide the vehicle. So such vehicles, we call them as non-guided ground vehicles. Non-gated ground vehicles, we can call them as road vehicles and off-road vehicles. Road vehicles in the sense, the vehicles which really move on well-defined roads, well-made roads. That's what we mean by road vehicles, uh, right? Off-road vehicles means there are no well-defined roads, correct? A very different kind of terrain. All possible terrains, they should be able to negotiate. That's the main thing. So now, road under road vehicles. Again, you are very well aware. We use two wheel, two wheelers like motorbikes, three wheelers like auto rickshaws, luggage vehicles, small cars. All these are all three wheel vehicles. Then we have cars which are. SUVs and so on, they are four wheel vehicles, even light commercial vehicles, they are there. And we have also have multi axle vehicles. On the off road vehicles, many times, even some of the SUVs, the tractors, the earth moving vehicles, the military vehicles like tanker, tank, and all those things. So we can consider them as off road vehicles. They don't really travel on well defined roads. So we are talking about vehicle dynamic principles. These vehicle dynamic principles will apply whether it is road vehicle or whether it is off-road vehicle, whether it is a two-wheeler or it is three-wheeler or it is four-wheeler. The principles remain the same. However, I will be focusing on my discussion particularly on these cars, four-wheel vehicles. Okay, fine. Sometimes cars can be classified as based on the backs. However, this classification is very useful for study of aerodynamics. Correct. So the aerodynamics again influences vehicle dynamics. This is the reason why I just decided to define some of these. So based on the back, some vehicles will have square back, right, like this. So we call it a square back vehicle, fast back, notch back, like this notch back, 
here you have then you know hatchback like this right there are many of the small vehicles are all hatchback vehicles like this so when we study about air aerodynamic resistance when we perform drag analysis on the vehicles so these kind of bags are very useful anyway and based on that air airflow the aerodynamic forces change and such things we can take into consideration while carrying out vehicle dynamic analysis anyway that is not the most important part over here i'll be talking about more about talking more about the vehicle dynamics i feel it is necessary to know the anatomy of a car before because this terminology are very important when we are discussing vehicle dynamics so let me just indicate all those things first of all you see the power train which includes engine clutch the transmission the differential and connect uh, axles and so on that is power train this the anatomy for basically i'm discussing anatomy for a front engine front wheel drive vehicle right so everything is packed over here the power train this part you call it as hood then here you will have some gap that you call it as coal or planum and this one is the windshield windshield right right then for driver you will have instrument panel here that is the thing then you have steering wheel then you have the pillar this is called a pillar <coughs> this is known as windshield header so this driver mannequin right right just simulate this then this portion here there is a pillar we call this as the b pillar right this one then headliner then rear occupant mannequin then it is a rear header this region and here this is called c pillar then this we call it as this glass there is a backlight this is what is called deck lid this whole thing is called trunk lid trunk sorry then you have our rear lighting okay okay tire then the rear spindle and suspension here then you will have you know seat correct spare tire right that is the thing then rear bumper and impact system here you will have right then you will have fuel tank here right this we call curb and this wherever this wheel makes a contact and this point when we join a dry line this we call it as departure angle whatever gear that enters it departs like this this act as a diffuser basically this is ground minimum ground clearance not minimum maximum ground clearance and if you join these two points and all this whatever angle you get we call it as a ramp over angle then of course this is what you call it is your floor and underbody structure then you have front spindle and suspension in this region then you have front bumper and impact system of course you will have grill and all these things for cooling air to enter and there is front lighting or forward lighting these are some of the anatomy the parts you should be remember the external side of it okay now let us look at some main systems in a passenger car 
you can call this as major subsystems of a vehicle. Better. I know that if you have already studied automotive technology, you will be very much aware of all these things. But just to, you know, make a kind of, you know, to make you comfortable in understanding vehicle dynamics, I am just repeating those, some of these things. Probably those who are going to learn vehicle dynamics for the first time, uh, having no exposure of automotive technology, this might help them. Okay. And if you are not keen about those things, you can always skip, right? Thing is, let us look at this. You have the engine and the transmission system. That is what I call it as powertrain. You are the engine, fine. Correct. Then you have clutch. This can be this is clutch in case of manual transmission, otherwise it can be a torque converter. Gearbox, that's what we sometimes they call it as transmission. It can be manual or it can be automatic. After that you have universal joint, the propeller shaft, probably you'll have universal joint, the final drive, differential, axle wheels like this this one set great that is gasoline engine come transmission i set then you have steering system steering wheel then you have steering column then you will have rack then tie rod, all this connecting to the wheel. So that is steering system we have. Then you have suspension system over which the sprung mass sits. Suspension, rear, rear suspension, the spring dash part, control arms, front suspension, here. Then you have fuel supply system, gas supply system, fuel tank here. From the fuel tank, you will have a line pump pumping the so from fuel tank, the fuel will flow to the engine injectors. That's the thing, injection system will have. Okay, All right. Then you will have braking system. Okay. So you have brake pedal, then you have master cylinder, then you have brake lines, see here, then here brake, disc brake, that is a part. This is the for the front, same thing will do, run to the rear, rear brake, brake system. Then electrical system, you have battery. Then you have alternator, correct, that is for then self-starting mechanisms and of course you will have electrical connection to the lighting system and all other places where you know the electric power is required, those connections will be there, that is the, so you will not be very, it's not very clear over here, not to worry about that. So, assuming that you understood all these things under, you know, in automobile technology, then you have cooling system, of course you have radiator and if you see all these things, you will have fan, ready, dry cooling fan, then pump, okay, all this. That is your cooling system, then you have braking system, then you have exhaust system, you can see that. The exhaust pipe coming from the exhaust manifolds going over here sometimes if you have a turbocharger you will have the turbine part of the turbocharger here then you have the catalytic converter then you have the muffler then the tail pipe that is exhaust system okay right these are the main parts main subsystems of a passenger car 
Now let us look at automobile. I'll just divide this into three main parts. Let me call this as chassis system. Chassis system. You are the frame. Frame is sitting over the suspension. Correct. Then to this suspension system and you have wheels attached. Okay. On the suspension, basically you see here this chassis. One is what is one of the most important is the chassis, the frame. And here your suspension, 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 suspension. Correct. Then the suspension will support this wheels you see here. Alright. Then you have the power train. So I have many times repeated power times includes the complete engine system, the clutch, the transmission, propeller shaft, differential axle and that will be finally axles will be connected to these wheels. Okay, this sits on this. So it covers, this body covers all of these. So this is the body. When we talk about vehicle aerodynamics, we focus more on this body and its shape and other things. Of course, we have to look at to whom you are making this car, what are the requirements based on the we design this. This when we talk about powertrain, we our focus will be on this region. When we are talking about vehicle dynamics, our focus will be on this region. Many times people call it as chassis dynamics, vehicle dynamics, chassis dynamics, like that, right? <coughs> so this is how we can divide into three main parts. So I'll focus here, this part. Another important thing we should know before studying vehicle dynamics is the drive system. Here, we have a front engine, a rear wheel drive. Means, these, the motion comes from these rear wheels. They push the vehicle forward. Actually, the traction force will be at these wheels. Okay? Because of this traction force, they push the vehicle. This is what we call it as front engine rear wheel drive vehicle. But it has many advantages. We will discuss those things later. But many of the present day cars are, you know, front engine front wheel drive vehicle. You are the engine, <coughs> clutch, transmission, the differential, you can say half shafts here, the front wheels, it pull the vehicle. Okay. And many times people use four wheel drive. So here rear wheels are alive. Here front wheels are live, here all wheels will be live. See here you have the transmission, after the transmission you have a transfer case. So from the transfer case, motion is transmitted to the front, sorry, to the rear as well as to the front. So it will be pushing as well as it will be pulling. Okay. That's a kind of drive wheel automobile drive system. Four, we call it as four wheel drive system. This has many advantages. This has some other advantages. This has some other. like, you know, depending on the application, we should be looking at whether we should go for rear wheel drive, front wheel drive or four wheel drive. And in vehicle dynamics, we will discuss what kind of advantages this drive system will give, what kind of advantage this, this. It's not like this is the best or this is the best or this is the best, depending on the requirement we do. Let us talk about 
coordinate system. So, first to define before defining the coordinate system, let us identify or the center of gravity part in vehicle dynamics subject the center of gravity plays a very important role so if you take the car let us say this is the top view of the car okay top view of the car let us say this is the front view of the car okay right so at the center let me draw a line this is longitudinal axis let me call this as x axis longitudinal axis This is Y. This we call it as lateral axis. Longitudinal lateral. Okay. So this is your Z axis. This let me call it as vertical axis. vertical axis right let me call this as right front axle axle this is rear axle let us say okay so many other times the center of gravity it depends on the design anyway it depends on the design anyway the center of gravity lies most of the time right it depends on the design anyway i'm just saying let me say it is nearer to the front axis this is center of gravity position cg you can call this distance as B and this distance you can call it as C and if you see from ground line if this is a ground line correct somewhere here you will see that the center of gravity right so that's what center of gravity is located so longitudinal axis is known as x axis lateral axis is known as y vertical axis is known as z forward positive back negative right positive left negative down positive z positive up z negative like this okay right fine so these are the translational degrees of freedom x y z if it is rotating about x axis this is called roll degree of freedom about y axis rotation pitch degree of freedom about z axis it is yard degree of freedom okay a roll about x axis pitch is about y axis and y is about z axis okay right fine sir. let us see vehicle movements of interest those all the six degrees of freedom Okay. Right. 
so this is the side view of the car now if i give a traction force here traction force at the wheel vehicle accelerates if i apply force in the opposite direction that is brake force vehicle deaccelerates okay this is the displacement or along x axis right fine now you just take the front view of the vehicle so the front if you see this is your z axis and this is your y axis this is left suspension and this is right suspension correct so right left so you have forces here center of gravity if this force fr is greater than fl the couple may act like this correct you will get roll the other way also can happen that's how you get the rolling moment correct left right force variation if there is and you will get this fine good ha huh. let us talk about now z as you have seen this is the sprung mass then your suspension then your unsprung mass that is your axle and all tire okay sprung mass unsprung mass if there is a road force like this at the four wheels this will move up and down this is bouncing correct and now let us see the top view of the vehicle let me for understanding put the wheels like this right <coughs> which as this vehicle is taking it up and at the center of gravity you will find a centrifugal force to counter the centrifugal force you will have lateral force at the wheels say so grip forces right these forces will create a couple in this direction these forces create a couple in this direction so by chance clockwise couple is greater than the counter clockwise couple about z axis the vehicle will yeah in this case z axis perpendicular to the plane of this okay it will yeah that is what i am talking about about z axis now let us look at y axis what happens again same top view of the vehicle you take yes these are the wheels right 
now let us say this vehicle is as I said taking a turn the centrifugal force is this now you have lateral forces acting like this so what happens if these four lateral forces which are acting in this direction centrifugal force is acting in this direction by chance this force is greater than this force the vehicle will simply slide okay that is y axis side force and another very important thing that we should be knowing is that again if you take okay side view of the car okay if this force is greater than this force it will create a moment like this and so also reverse this is what you call it as pitching and perpendicular to this plane is what you have is y axis so that's what i am talking about what happens along x axis y axis z axis you can call it as x axis dynamics y axis dynamics and z axis dynamics then we can integrate everything okay this is what i was talking about center of gravity this is what you track width this is the wheel based length so center line x axis longitudinal axis okay this is your center of gravity depending on the design the center of b and c will vary this height of center of gravity from the ground this is the total load of the vehicle this is the load on the front axle during static condition load front static load rear static Yes. Now I'm just giving an idea like what will be the kind of low distribution that happens. This I am just taken punto. Total weight of the vehicle is 1078 kg. Out of that 724 kg is in the front, 354 kg is in the rear. So almost two is to one kind of a distribution. Again, on each wheel, if you divide, is 362, 362, 177, 177. But very rarely that kind of equal distribution will be there. Uh, one can have maybe 350, and this can become 374 like that, and this can be maybe 150 this can be 194 like this because of the packaging problem there will be some variations in these loads right <sighs> vehicle weights sprung mass already i explained like you know say wheels say axle and brakes you have here axle and brakes and this is your suspension and this is both your body as well as power train so this we call it as sprung mass because it is sitting on the suspension this we call it as unsprung mass suspension weight will analysis time half we transfer here half we can transfer here so small cars will have 650 to 900 kg that is a sprung mass 
cars intermediate cars large cars small suvs large suvs this is the big variation that happens now wheel base so you have this is the right this is what we call it as wheel base length l and this we call it as track width you can call it as track front track rear also track front and track rear they may be equal they may not be equal also many times this is little larger than this so wheel base this is what 2 2.3 meters to 2.5 meters okay is approximately something like 7.6 foot to 8.25 yeah, 8 feet, right? That's the kind of distance you will have. And if you look at the track width and uh, wheel base length, suppose this minimum, if I take 2300, wheel base length and this 3060 okay maybe around 70 percent of that okay all right so this is the kind of ratio they will have these are the variations you can see distance of center of gravity after front axle, apt of front axle, that is the meaning. This front axle, this rear axle, center of gravity here. It depends front engine, front wheel drive. This is wheel base length 35% to 45% of wheel base. If it is front engine, rear wheel drive, almost 50%. Rear engine, rear wheel drive, it will be more towards rear. This is very important in handling. So distance of center of gravity and height of center of gravity is also very important. See, suppose if I take this as your vehicle, let me divide it to two chambers, the front chamber, rear part. This is the weight in the front, let us say. This let me call it as weight in the rear. Say overall center of gravity is here. Correct. If your vehicle is taking a turn this is the centrifugal force that is acting wef v squared by r wef by g v squared by r here it is w rear by g v squared by r where r is the turning radius v is the vehicle velocity if this is very high then what happens about this center of gravity so you are trying to turn this way, it is trying to turn this way. So you have to steer more, it makes the vehicle more understeered. By chance this is very high compared to this, 
this centrifugal force will create a rotation in this direction, couple in this direction. So this is helping you. That means it becomes, so it will oversteer the vehicle. That's what we call it as handling. So you need to be very careful whether you want to make a very sluggish vehicle, means understeer, responsive vehicle. Sometimes the vehicle becomes over responsive means dangerous. So that way it is very important where how much where we should place the center of gravity. Dynamically center of gravity changes. How dynamically changes means because of the dynamic load transfer and moreover the loading pattern of the vehicle. And another thing is if this is your suspension, if the center of gravity is very high, you see here there is a centrifugal force like this whenever you are taking a turn this force and this distance will create you know a roll maybe i'll take exactly the roll center later and this arm length is high even if the force is large the rolling will be very high that's why it is necessary to keep the center of gravity as low as possible otherwise during turns and all that it becomes very very difficult to control the vehicle that way these are all very important so for a truck trailer dimensions the same way you can study these terminologies that you are given here. okay so trucks come in various shapes various sizes depending on the purpose the transport vehicle has to meet but however whatever way you be the design whatever be the design packaging of the vehicle is important what do you mean by packaging package the vehicle in such a way you should be able to place the center of gravity the static condition at the desired location that's very important design location so that is the reason why i have shown this diagram carefully you should package it sometimes they place the tire here sometimes here so depending on you know space available also where exactly the center of gravity has to be play arrived at that's a very important thing okay these are some of the fundamental terminology that we have learned and uh, let me stop this part here and continue in the from here in the next session till then thank you